Today we're going to learn about data sources. There are three types of data you can bring into Tin Man Real Time. COM and serial port data. You can bring that up from virtual or physical ports. UDP data. That could be from remote local IP addresses, wired or wireless. You can also bring in data from CSV data files. and That could be static or files that are being simultaneously written to. But keep in mind there's no limit to the number of data files that you can bring in or sources at the same time. For today's short tutorial, we're going to bring in data from a COM port. And for this uh, example case, we're going to use an Arduino project. And you can see that this project, uh, we have separated the, the physical system from one of the sensors. And this is an IMU uh, accelerometer, gyro, and, and uh, magnetometer sensor stick that gives us 3D orientation in space. And what we want to do is see the data that's coming off this. And we know that the Arduino is connected to the serial port uh, with this USB cable. So what we do is you want to go into Tin Man Real Time. We've already launched Real Time. Click on Data Sources and Command Targets. That's at the top of the ribbon bar. Uh, and then you're going to select one of these data sources. Now you have three to choose from, as we mentioned in the start of this video. A UDP source, a COM source, or a CSV source. What we have in this case, of course, is a COM source. So we're going to click on that button. And we get the new COM data source wizard port and parameters dialog box that pops up. It's pretty simple. Just simply select the port. And you do that by dropping this combo box down. And what that'll do is it'll query the system and report on all of the ports that are uh, available uh, or can be seen. And that includes physical or virtual ports. And in this case, we have the Arduino Uno on COM7. And Tin Man Real Time will take care of that querying for you so that you can just find that by dropping that box down. Uh, we could give it a name if we want. We're just going to leave it that way. Uh, and we could give it a description uh, for our own benefit. I don't think we need one here. And then here are some uh, basic parameters to configure for a serial port. The baud rate, the parity, data bits, and stop bits. In most cases, you'll leave these alone, but the baud rate you might change more frequently. In our case here, we have one that's 57,600 baud rate, or 57,600. I'm going to select that and go to the next dialog box. Here, which is the step two of two, is the configuring the data message structure. Now, we had complete control in this case because we wrote the microcontroller uh, sketch that was uploaded to that Arduino. And so we know that the data that we're sending back or back into the COM port from the Arduino is comma delimited. So if it's byte positioned, you click that. But comma delimited in this case, and the other is the message content. So each line, does it begin with a prefix? If you have multiple systems, you may want to precede each uh, individual system's set of sensor messages with a prefix. For instance, drone 1, drone 2, drone 3. And the way you do that is just drone 1. Uh, and but that would be if they're coming in on the same port. You don't have to do that. But in this case, we're just going to leave that unchecked. And multi-sensor messages just means that on a particular line, before the line feed and carriage return, uh, are you providing data values for more than one sensor? And in our case, we wrote the microcontroller uh, sketch. And so we did not include more than one sensor per line. So we're going to leave that unchecked. And the last one is a sensor identifier. Very rarely will you select no IDs, because you have to know what the ID of the sensor is so that we can capture that when it comes into the port. Uh, in this case, we have string IDs. We have sensors called uh, forward and back motors. We have rotors. Uh, we have uh, various other uh, names for those sensors. Uh, we don't have integer IDs. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select string. And we'll click uh, Next and Finish. And let's click at the top of uh, Tin Man Real Time. You'll see these two kind of grade in radar symbols. If you click those, then we run. Uh, and you see how the data is flowing in. Each time you add a data source, you'll get this little command window here. I'm just double clicking on this to show and uh, not show the raw data that's streaming in. And these will just stack themselves as you add more and more serial ports or more and more data sources. And you can see the raw data that comes in. If I pause this temporarily, you can see that there's individual lines of data that are being read in from that port. Our job in the next tutorial will be to parse this data by using uh, data sensor templates. 
and then we can add controls to the screen and visualize each of these individual elements. You'll also notice this yellow light here. I pause this. If I click on one of those radar symbols again, uh, this green light goes back on, and we can see the data flowing into the port. Um, conveniently with ComSource, and not so with UDP or CSV source because you don't need to, uh, but with a ComSource, you're going to share that port uh, with incoming and outgoing data. And so what Realtime does is it conveniently sets up for you a data target. And so you can add commands to the screen and send commands from Tin Man Realtime back to that original system using the same port. And so when you select COM sources, you'll get both an incoming data uh, window as well as an outgoing or command target window. And you'll see the outgoing raw uh, COM port messages that are sent, not UDP messages, uh, the commands that are sent to that system. That's a great way to test the system. And we'll show how to add command buttons and various other controller con uh, controllers to the screen. OK, and so I just briefly added a uh, sensor data template for the IMU sensor. Uh, and you can see that uh, it is preceded by the hashtag YPR equals and then three values separated by commas. Um, I just wanted to show that that data is changing. I'm going to grab a stacked value control and select that IMU sensor. And you can see there are those three values, 102, and the pitch is minus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and move that sensor around just a little bit so we can see uh, those values change. And we can add more gauges. Let me put this down and go back and add another control. And we'll just show how the, um, let's see if we use the 3D orientation one. Uh, and we'll set that to COM7, and that would be pitch, and this is going to be roll, and this is going to be yaw. And we'll leave it left side, and we'll just show how that works. And then we'll stop this first tutorial of how to set up a COM port, and we'll show how to do those individual data sensor templates so that you can parse that data when it comes into the port. Look to the other tutorials to learn how to add sensor data templates to parse the incoming data. Thank you.